welcome back to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, Member Connection, and you already know, growing business, growing small minority businesses here in Miami-Dade County. I am so excited. And you know, it's that time of the year that this guy is needed. Kenneth Wright, how are you? I'm doing great, and it really is getting to be that time of year. Uh, open enrollment starts November 1. It's already begun for Medicare, November 1 for people that are under 65. So yeah, this is this is our busy season. Yeah, um, Kenneth is the health insurance savant. I am the savant. And the reason I got that name was because uh, a lot of people are health insurance agents. Right. In fact, my tag is, why use an agent? And you could choose the savant. <laughs> That's my tag because a lot of agents just they're they're just I hate to say it, they're just pushing policies. Okay. Well, before we get into that, because it's a very important topic, uh, very important subject uh, for for our community. Um, tell us a little bit a little bit about Kenneth. Where, where are you from? What got you into this uh, world of insurance? You know, Eric, that's a, it's a really long story. Um, well, you can I, do it. I, I, yeah, make it, yeah. Reduce it. I'll really make it small. What happened was I used to have a company in New York, okay, a health and wellness company, and I did wellness programming in corporations. Okay. And the company grew to a size that an insurance broker decided to buy my company. Okay. So I sold it to him. And then I went inside the insurance business as opposed to being on the outside with the doctors. Um, once I got inside the insurance business, we had our seven years together, and that was enough. And that's when, after that all ended, that's when I came down to Miami. Okay. Um, and then after coming to Miami, which is another whole story of why I came here, <laughs> but I decided to get back in the business. And rather than working on the corporate side, I decided I wanted to work in the smaller business and individual marketplace, and that's how I got here, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, and as you said, you, you came down from New York? Okay. In 13, uh, so I'm not one of the Oh, <laughs> that's where you know that's exactly yeah. where I was yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've been down here since 2013, and um, here we are in 23, so that's basically 10 years. Yeah, and, and I do want to say this. I came down with Teach for America. Okay. So what I had done is I'd done a really well, made some money, and I said, let me do something good for the world. Okay. So I joined Teach for America, and they sent me to Miami, even though I was thinking I was going to Las Vegas or Denver. <laughs> so they sent me to Miami, and I thought that teaching would be like a walk in the park. Like, I can teach. I do a lot of stuff. I got, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And what, what age group were you teaching? I taught uh, in Homestead. And I taught, uh, my second year was really the most important year, I think, for me. I taught 11th graders. Okay. okay. So I was teaching. It wasn't middle school. It was a middle well, school. Well, I had my first year in middle school. <laughs> I had my first year in middle school, but right. then I moved down to the high school. And I worked with kids that just, uh, it was a challenge. I mean, you know, trying to get them to understand that if they worked, they'd be successful. And that was probably, if I could have instilled anything in right. them, that was the whole message. Yeah, uh, I mean, we could talk about that all day in, in our youth, and, and you know, we're in this, as I say, microwave uh, time. You know, they want everything now, and they said work. Yeah. And, and understanding that whole uh, ethic of, of working and, and growing and coming up. Everybody, what I see is that they, you know, Again, they want to be the manager and don't understand, yep. don't want to go through the process. But that's another story. Yeah, it's that's another, another whole another story. <laughs> it's another whole yeah, story. Yeah, that's another whole story. Um, so here we are, as we said, um, we're at this period of time of the year where, where health insurance uh, with Medicare and, and choosing uh, different plans. I really l would love for you to educate uh, our audience in that process because I know a lot of people are retiring or e reaching that age of 65 I think it is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that they have to declare their Medicare and then get a supplement and there's a lot of moving parts yeah. to that. Well, <clears throat> two things number one is I want to tell there's nobody out there that can't afford to get health insurance I'm gonna say it again there's nobody out there that can't afford to get health insurance um, if you find the right person, they can help you find it. Um, for people that are low income or no income, there are programs 
for people that are middle income. There are programs that will allow them to pay, pay practically nothing, if nothing, each month. So don't think you can't afford it, number right. one. Um, also, this is where it gets complicated. You have to find someone you can really trust. Mm -hmm. Because the insurance business, like a lot of businesses, are filled, are filled with people that are on the hustle. I mean, it's right. a way to make money. So don't just, if, don't just talk to one person. Talk to a couple different people or find someone you really trust. Right. And then, you know, talk to someone else. Right. And I really mean that. Um, no, it, it makes a lot of sense. Because really, there's so many different options that you have. It's, it's and, confusing it, for most agents. <laughs> it really is. Right. I mean, that, that's the whole point, is that even for people that are steeped in the industry, there are hundreds and hundreds of options for people. Uh, what, what I always tell people is, if you're healthy, then get a high deductible plan with low premiums, mm -hmm. right? So you're not paying much each month. <clears throat> and if you're not healthy, get a low deductible plan and be willing to pay high premiums because you're going to be seeing the doctor a lot. That is just a simple way. That's just the beginning way of starting to look at things. But Say that again. Repeat. So if you're healthy, like you, mm -hmm. right, um, no reason to pay a lot each month. Right. Just because you're not using it. You're not going to see the doctor. Exactly. Right. So if you go see the doctor, you have to pay something out of pocket. Right. Okay, it's fine, right? You know, because you're not seeing the doctor very often. But if you have to see the doctor frequently, let's say you have asthma or diabetes or some ongoing chronic illness, and you have to see doctors every couple of weeks or every couple of months, right. if you're paying out of pocket for that, it can get expensive. So be willing to pay a higher premium each month so that you're not paying as much out of pocket. I got you. I got you. So, again, and I'm not going to get into the names of the insurance. There are so many, and you see so many commercials. Explain Medicare versus the insurance. Well, okay. Well, the Med Medicare is has really two major parts for people, part A and part B, and then you have the drug part. But part A and B are what most people will enroll in. And I'm a good example because I turned 65 last year, okay. and I automatically got part A. Okay. But because my wife was employed... I could be on her policy, and I didn't have to get Part B, which is for, Part A is for hospitalization, and Part B is for medical services, like doctor's uh, visits okay. and stuff. Now that I've, now my wife and I are in different situations now, I now elected for Part B, so now I have the medical part covered. But and, what, and is that when you go out into the... Supplement market and stuff. Supplement market, and you see all these commercials. Yeah, and, and again, I don't want to. I'm not. I don't want to um, speak ill of anything. No, no. But, but but I do want people to know that, and I'm not going to name companies. But if you look in the newspapers or you go online, let's just say that if you aren't looking newspapers, a number of companies that were selling Med Medicare Advantage plans over the last couple of years are being sued by the federal government. Okay. Because they're misrepresenting their products. Okay. So that's why it's really important. People were paying for things and not getting what they thought they were getting. So and, and that's that, and and you see that's to me that's the crux of the crux of the matter. Yeah. Is understanding what you're getting, and like you said, you you people are selling you one thing, and at the end of the day, you really don't know what you're getting. But before we get into that, we'll be right back. We're going to take a little break and hear from one of our supporters. Learn and earn today at Miami-Dade College. College graduates earn 56% more than high school graduates and a million more lifetime earnings. A degree from MDC is your path to greater earning power and career success. Choose from hundreds of affordable high-tech and in-demand career programs, including cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, business, and nursing. Learn and earn today at MDC and fast track your career. Enroll now at mdc.edu slash purpose. And welcome back to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce Member Connection. I'm your host, Eric Knowles, and we have the health savant and Mr. Kenneth Wright. And we we're talking about, before we took the break, it is, it's really mind-boggling. In in particular, I'm actually on medic. I got Medicare. I'm yeah. I'm I'm that guy. 
but I have supplement also because I'm still working and, and you know, you need the medical care. I go to the doctor, I go have my annual uh, checkups and periodically have to go in. And I'm at that point in my life, I, I feel something, I'm gonna go check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, what's, what's, and what we were talking about is the importance of, it's not, the hard thing isn't getting a policy. Right, that's easy. The hard thing is learning how to use the policy. Important. And that's where a good agent or broker will be with you along that path. Okay. Um, I had a client call me a few weeks ago. She woke up and the right side of her face was paralyzed. Mm. Um, what should I do? I called my doctor. I can't get a hold of them. A uh, person I worked with got COVID, called me that morning and said, um, you know, I need to go to an emergency room. Where should I go? What should I do? Um, that's the part. I like to play with my clients where selling a policy is a small part of what we do. It's providing ongoing understanding and care to minimize your out-of-pocket costs, but also to minimize your treatment needs. So that's the important part that doctor's offices used to play a big part of that. Right. They don't pay as, play as big a part of that now. Um, they're confused by the insurances right. and stuff. You know, what, and I, I want you to continue in that vein but the other challenge that I see, and I've actually had to change uh, doctors because my doctor wasn't in that particular plan, or my dentist wasn't in that plan. Yeah, the, and that's a, and the, people don't want to hear this, but this is the truth, which is the more you pay for a plan, the more apt you are to have better doctors in the plan, mm -hmm. because the plans pay the doctors different amounts. Right. So an HMO pays the doctor the least amount. Mm -hmm. So if you PPO. elect an HMO, then you're going to realize that a lot of your doctors that you might want to go see won't be in that network. Right. Different insurances paid. Blue Cross pays a doctor one thing. United Healthcare pays a doctor nothing. Aetna pays a doctor something else. So all those plans have different relationships with the doctors. The good news is, is last year there was a law passed where that information is going to be increasingly uh, available mm -hmm. for people to understand what their doctors are being paid, and that will help them and educate them in making decisions on what insurances to choose. But your case of having to change doctors is not uncommon. As a matter of fact, sometimes you can be in a network with a doctor and they'll drop out. Right. So you uh, you chose it because that doctor was in right. it, exactly. and, and they decided no, I you know. I, it doesn't make sense to me anymore to be part of this network. Right, right. So it's it's a moving target. Right. So let's, again, let's go down into the trenches. And when you're going through, like you said, there's Medicare Part A, Part B. But when you're going through this process of selecting that Part B, whether it's, like you said, uh, Florida blue or right, whatever right, right. it might be. Just, just walk through that a little bit in terms of not that you have in your head and you might, you know, the different the differences in this particular policy versus that policy and why should you go to this one versus that one? Uh, well, I mean, besides um, deductibles and your monthly premiums. Because now they have these things where they're giving you money for groceries, they're doing, they're giving you um, uh, money back on, on a monthly basis. Um, and then I know with Medicare, you got the, what, the, um, what's the sneaker? Silver sneaker. Yeah, yeah. And all those things are bells and whistles. Right. Because you could pay out of pocket for all those things. Right. Do not choose a policy because they're going to give you a gym membership. Do not choose a policy because they might say, we'll pay for your groceries once a month. They're doing that to kind of entice you about things that you understand. Well, that sounds great. That's why I want to get it. But the care that you may be provided by the, by the network that they're in might not be what you need. And that's what's really important, that the care being provided to you is the care that you need. And I always tell people, it's not the doctor you need today, it's a doctor you might need tomorrow. You want to be able to have flexibility. You don't want to get stuck just going to one hospital in Miami. Right. Maybe you need to go to the Mayo Clinic. Maybe you need to go to MD Anderson in Houston. 
Maybe you need, need to go to um, Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. That might be where you'll receive the best care. So if you want to have that flexibility, you need to find a plan that will allow for that. Right. So that those are the kinds of things that when you're looking for a plan, you need to really think about. And to your point, um, in particular, here we are, we're a chamber. Obviously, we, we provide the technical assistance to all walks of life. We have young entrepreneurs, we have older entrepreneurs. Um, going to, to your point of saying having, you may have to go to John Hopkins or you may have to go out of state in terms of being a senior or you're just a person who travels a lot. That's very important. Talk about that part of well, it. Well, so if you buy a plan in the marketplace, let's just use that for an example. So it's an, an ACA plan, it's called Obamacare. Number one, Obamacare is great. So let me just get that out of the way. People okay. are saying, I don't want to have to get Obamacare. No, Obamacare is nothing to do, not, it really doesn't mean anything other than it's a real darn good policy that maybe you don't have to pay much for. So let's just say that. Right. The problem with most policies are sold in the state through the, the marketplace, provide no coverage outside the state. I'm glad we're talking about it. That's why I brought it Except up. Except for emergent care. Okay. So if you have a heart attack, then they have to treat you. If you have a stroke, then they have to treat you. But after that, the question is, what is emergent care and what is not? And I'm telling you right now, the insurance companies want to make sure that they can rate it as not emergent because they don't want to have to pay for it. Okay. So if you do a lot of traveling out of state, uh, it's important to look at plans that might provide some coverage out of state, and that's not in the marketplace, right? In the Obamacare marketplace, right? And speaking out of out of out of state, what about out of the country? That's a whole another. Yeah, ball but game I mean, say. if you're going to go out of the country, you can buy a really inexpensive travel policy. I just okay. sold one to someone last week that's that's going to be um, in England and Turkey and in Spain for four or five months, and it's cost some. Hundred dollars and change. Wow. Okay. Of course, it's a young person too. Right. Right. The now, older, the older you get, the, the more the more the more cost it is. Right. But yeah, but uh, you always get a travel policy. Don't don't expect your even though your plan might say will provide you benefits overseas. Right. They say they you know they, it, it's a question of the insurance company making a decision. Right. So what does in in Florida? We, I don't even get into homeowners insurance. That's a whole another thing. Oh. But what does the future? And we got a few more, a couple minutes left. Um, what would you say to someone who is looking for insurance right now? Well, number one, rates are going to go up this year. Okay. Um, across the board, they're expecting about a six point five percent rate hike. And I, I need to tell this because I think this is hilarious. Uh, Four hundred million dollars in claims had come in by the middle of this year because of pickleball injuries. Ooh. And so one of the reasons your <laughs> rates are going up is because of pickleball. Ooh, um, another reason is because, is because a lot of people didn't get elective surgeries during COVID and they're getting them now. Okay. And then lastly is, of course, inflation. Right. So rates are going to go up. Realize that. Um, what would I tell anybody? Don't go on healthcare.gov by yourself. Okay. That's what I would just say. Um, and that's really the most important thing. We're talking about people that have to purchase their own coverage. If you have an, a company coverage, enjoy it and be happy with it. Um, we could talk about sometimes where it might make sense for you not to go with your employer's coverage. Right. But that's, again, another whole topic. So how do they get in touch with you? Um, I am the health insurance savant. I can be reached at thehealthinsurancesavant.com. Um, my phone number is... I have a YouTube channel, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm all over Instagram and Facebook. If you wanna call me, you can call me directly at 917-710-2453. Yes, it's a New York number, but I am in Miami, 917-710-2453. Um, so, or reach me through the chamber. Absolutely. That would be I, the easiest way to do it. I was going to say, you can see Kenneth probably every Tuesday at the member meetup at 4 o'clock, Paris. <laughs> yeah, through the chamber is probably the simplest way since you're watching this. Member, can, member meetup, 4 o'clock, every Tuesday. If you want to know more about the chamber, 305-751-8648, www.m-dcc.org. See you the next time.